Mm. You're eating, aren't you? I have an ice sparkling uh, lemonade drink. Oh, and I grabbed a snack before we recorded. So a Sprite, then? Um, no, this is a... Uh... It's like a it's like a flavored sparkling water. It's zero. It's oh, it's like five calories. Way way better to drink than a sprite. In terms of the health value. Sure, let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, almost Thanksgiving. It is. I assume I don't actually fucking know. I just know I keep getting emails from Amazon about um, uh, Black Friday deals, which is... Man, I remember when that wasn't a thing in this country. It's... Yeah, it, we talked about like 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 every year. It's just like now it's, now it's a thing everywhere because... Amazon is everywhere and American no, company and no just just because you also this this wasn't an Amazon thing this is just an everything thing yeah so it's it's a good day for deals buy everything twenty dollars off yay get into a fist fight in the shopping mall yay you know that sort of thing. Is that actually happening this year? Better question, did it happen last year? I don't actually know. Uh, last year, it was all just... Era was very focused on delivering things, and the entire delivery system was all backed up. Ah. Uh, this I, year... I, I would say that um, would be better than we, the usual Black Friday, frankly. This year, we don't have enough labor for the delivery system, and so it's going to be really, really backed up. Oh, yeah. We know what that's like over here in England. Yeah. It's a... Going to have to go to the store in person. Terrifying. I don't even remember the last time I did that. Months ago, I think. That was to buy groceries. Like... God. <laughs> when was the last time I bought something other than groceries from a shop? Holy crap, that is actually a thing I don't know the answer to. It was that long ago. Perhaps it's time to leave your nest and spread your wings. No, I'm kidding. No, I can't uh, drive, so it's, fucking uh... whatever. Why would I go anywhere to buy things when it costs me way way more time and inconvenience than it does most people like fuck it 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 they've and, and also in the u.s like uh, especially in california our gas prices are going insane right now <clears throat> like utterly ridiculous so is that because it, everyone's freaking the fuck out because you know gas shortage except not really people just fucking panicked and Caused everything to go to hell. Yeah, uh, prob probably. But uh, yeah, it's 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 like five dollars a gallon right now. I have I have no frame of reference. For it, that. When it was when it was really when it was really good, it was like two dollars a gallon. Okay. So it's it's. And, and I'm used to it being, you know, closer to like three ish. But now we're like, we're approaching five, and that means that like if you want to fill up your car, it's not going to cost, you know, forty bucks. It's going to cost closer to eighty bucks. Uh, okay. How, how much? How far does a gallon get you? Broadly speaking, I know it's like different for different cars. Uh. Depends on the car, yeah, but it can get you uh, 
some cars can get you like 20 miles per gallon, 24 miles, or, or sometimes, you know, a little bit more. But um, you, you, you end up using up those miles a lot faster than you might think, you know. Especially if you, if you have to drive to multiple places in a day, and you have to drive to work, you have to drive back, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's all messy. <clears throat> But uh, I'm willing to bet you've started recording by now. Oh, yeah, yeah, ages ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, I, you know, I actually saw a movie um, recently. Um, just came out, uh, the new Ghostbusters movie. I have seen the trailer for it, and I have heard briefly mentioned in another server that it was good yeah um i would the last time they tried to make a ghostbuster movie it was uh it was terrible they tried to do a whole reboot thing and it it, it was just people listening to this will be familiar with the 2016 reboot of ghostbusters yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't good. It wasn't I, Ghostbusters. I I say reboot. It had a Dan Aykroyd cameo where he knew everything about everything ghosts, so it's a little muddy. But yeah. Um, the new Ghostbusters movie is um a sequel to the original. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, focusing on um. Egon's uh, children slash grandchildren. Like his grandchild Phoebe is kind of the main character of this movie, and she is um, the the actress is a very good job. Um, is just very charismatic, very funny. Um, the writing overall in the movie is just solid. It it feels like Ghostbusters. It's consistently funny, and. Uh, even even sticks with and expands upon the lore of like Gozar and and the whole keymaster gatekeeper like what that whole deal is like it it doesn't it doesn't go out and try to be like oh this doesn't all exist it's like no this does exist and we're kind of you know we're going to we're going to honor the legacy we're going to build upon it add more new things kind of expand the world building and yeah, I, I liked, I liked, uh, I liked the characters, I liked the writing. Uh, the action scenes were very good, and mm. it was a Ghostbusters movie. I enjoyed it. I would recommend going and seeing it. Mm. The pacing is a bit slow in the beginning, but I also think it's because they have to establish things and establish a tone, and um, they. Part of that is kind of, it, it felt, it, it's not like they were explicitly trying to repair the damage from the, from the uh, last Ghostbusters attempted movie, but it felt like the way they slowed it down and really gave you more character stuff and more of the fun writing felt like they were trying to really establish it as more than just some sort of reboot, you know? Mm. This is a sequel. And, you know, the whole New York incident thing that happened at the climax of uh, the Ghostbusters movie, that happened in this world. Um, Older people are aware of it. The younger generation, it happened before they were born. So, you know, they're not all going to know about it. Yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, uh, the original Ghostbusters do show up in it as themselves. So that's good. Hmm. <clears throat> um, I, I'd take another one of these movies. I'd, I'd, I'd happily have another one of these movies with this this cast. Um, cool. Yeah. It was, it was just it was just nice to go see a, a good movie that was based off of a older franchise that didn't just crap on the franchise, you know. It's interesting that they kind of 
took on a very similar premise to one of the cartoons. Hmm. Because it was like um, um, Extreme Ghostbusters was, I think it was Egon's grad students or something. Yeah. I, I guess to go a little bit into the premise of the movie, by the way, uh, it is specifically Egon. Um, the, the Ghostbusters split up, um, and Egon is uh, basically was living alone in the middle of, like, Ohio on um, this kind of abandoned-looking farm, farmhouse. And his uh, daughter... Who is a single mother um, to two children um, is notified that he has passed away and that uh, he has <clears throat> left everything to her. And she's, you know, a bit kind of bitter towards him because he abandoned her when she was young to go live on that dirt farm in the middle of nowhere. But um, she doesn't have money. And she's getting evicted from her place with her kids. So they go move over to Ohio and move into that uh, crappy little dirty farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. And better than nothing. You know, there's the what was that? <clears throat> better than nothing is what I said. Yeah, better than better than nothing. And so you have the um, the teenage son who's. Um, He's a, he's a Stranger Things kid. Um, and then you have Phoebe, who is the daughter, who takes after Egon a lot, um, but also is has, you know, issues socializing and issues kind of expressing her emotions and so takes is trying to make friends. Takes after Egon a lot. Takes after Egon a lot, but also kind of has her own quirks and her own personality. Hmm. And... Um, Seeing her kind of grow was very nice. The teenage son, um, I don't really like him that much as a character, but you know he he's 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 okay. He's a teenage boy, <laughs> you know. Mm. And then you have uh, the the summer school teacher, who's played by Ant Man, <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm trying to think who that is. It's. Escaping me. Mm. Is it Chris Pine? Uh, Paul Rudd. It's Paul oh, Rudd. Okay. I wanted to think and, it was Chris uh, because, you know, Marvel has all the Chris's. Paul Rudd is there and he's Paul Rudding it up. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's all these mysterious earthquakes that are happening. Um, and... Uh, around in, in the middle of Ohio, despite there being no, la uh, no like fault lines or any reason for that to happen, and the seismic activity is just weird, and there's a there's some mystery to it, and it's, it's pretty good. the The mother is, you know, she's a single mother. She's kind of terrible, but you know, uh, that's. I, I came around to her at, by the end of the movie. It's a ringing endorsement. Terrible as in a terrible mother. Yeah. Well, no. But you There's know, always room for that kind of character too. It's a funny movie. Um, also, <clears throat> also, uh, I deleted like three gotcha games off my phone. Including Cookie Run Kingdom and Cookie Run Kingdom specifically was because um, the kingdom building aspect was causing me to stress really hard. Of like, oh, well, I have to check in, I have to get this material, I have to do that, I have to do that, and it was causing me to be like OCD. Mm. Yep. And I was like, I don't need this in my life right now. <laughs> Fair enough. I get that. I, you know, the game's still fun, um, but it's just, uh, it was that combined with how um, everything, building everything was slowing down more and more, and I was, there was a bit of impatience mixed in there as well. I so. find that to be 
the good part at this point because I'm gradually building stockpiles to the point where I'll pretty much only have to start producing the stuff that takes literal hours so I can check in like a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also uh, deleted that world flipper, which is the, the pinball gotcha. And then uh, I deleted alchemy stars because while I did like the gameplay, um, I just, it has two problems. One of which being if you're in the middle of something and then you get a message and you switch back and then you go back to alchemy stars, it's like, Oh, you got disconnected time to take you back to the title screen. Yeah. And that's not great when you have long cutscenes. You know? No, I actually have that problem with Cookie Run a lot of the time. Because, <laughs> like, if I stop doing anything with it for, like, five minutes or so, then the game will lose connection. And it'll have to reestablish it. Uh, but if yeah. that happens in the middle of a, you know, a node when I'm actually doing a thing in, like, a fight, then it'll automatically force me to lose. It'll go through the entire sequence, it'll go through the entire level, but when I get to the end, it'll try and reconnect. It won't be able to. I'll have to restart the game, and it'll treat it like I lost. Which kind of sucks sometimes. Like, hey, do the big boss fight level and have all these cutscenes with the fucking characters and stuff and you're paying attention and you even turn the sound on because you want to hear the voice acting and because of that you lose because <laughs> you want to actually hear the story it's, it's kind of shitty mm. I uh I think that with one thing I, I, I do like about um, FGO in that sense is they, they have made it so that if you are in the middle of something, you can just hit a button to go resume, even if it's a story cut scene, which is nice. Mm. But also they added in, um, gosh, what was it? The, uh, the ability to... Um, mute or unmute in the middle of battle which was sorely missing and they just recently added that in and I'm like thank you thank you I like being able to hear things sometimes when I can hmm. I did not know they added that but I also probably wouldn't have cared so fair enough yeah. like I, I play that game entirely uh, muted for all of the time I don't even even for the special quote unquote special sequences where they add voice acting for like six lines i don't care so i just leave it muted hmm. um aside from 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 gotcha stuff uh, i did that. yeah aside from that we're still doing that seven years later <laughs> it's it's a, it's it's who we are hmm. um i got the new uh Pokemon uh, Brilliant Diamond, the remake of Pokemon Diamond. No or... spoilers. Um, I'm not going to talk spoilers um, because, you know, it is a it's an old game. I mean, the story is, is still the same as before. but um, It's pretty cookie cutter um, Pokemon stuff anyway. That's how they work. Um, this is a this is a very good game that's not made by the Pokemon Company or Game Freak. Uh, <laughs> there is some good quality of life stuff in this game. Um, you know, obviously, uh, what is now bog standard is the ability to access your PC box from anywhere, which is just again super, super nice. Um, the chibi style looks really great, and they also use dynamic camera angles to zoom in during cutscenes, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, all the little chibi models have various expressions that they can do. You don't need to so, press a button to run anymore. It just does it by default. You don't which... need, yeah. You don't need to press a button to run anymore. Um, there's uh, better backgrounds for battles. Um, just in general, the backgrounds for uh, your Pokemon battles look beautiful. Uh, I, the Pokemon are all well animated. They're, they're just fun to watch move. The animations for attacks just look great in general. Um, and I'm doing a Nuzlocke of this. Oh boy. I've made it past the second gym so far. Nobody okay. has died. Okay, when you say a Nuzlocke, what kind of Nuzlocke do you mean? Um, I am allowing myself to use items in battle, but um, I'm only catching one Pokemon per area. Um, and I'm naming it. Uh, if the Pokemon faints, they die. Um, and I'm putting them in the PC box as like a record of where I caught them and also like, you know, what I've done. I'm not releasing them because it's, it's just too mean for me. I want to keep their corpses in the computer. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am. I, I, am would, I would judge you for that after our own uh, Nuzlocke for uh, what was it? Blaze Black Two. Did we do one for one? I don't think we did one for one. Um, no, we didn't do. We only did Blaze Black Two. Yeah, um, I would judge you for that because we totally did release them in that in that run. But we also didn't release them in that run because we had like the special ones that were super cool that we kept in a box. That was like yeah. Was it Heroes or something like that? Yes. The super badass ones? Yeah. <laughs> so, Zero, tell me. Uh, in the original Diamond and Pearl, the third gem leader was Maylene. In Platinum, they switched it up and made it Fantina instead. Which is it this time? Um, I haven't reached the third gem yet. Mm. Uh, I think... I think it's Fantina, from what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um because um, I, I just briefly saw the back of her outside of the contest area, so it might be Fantina. Mm. Um, that would be interesting. I have heard that Miss Magus is quite a challenge at this early stage in the game. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, they don't also, do remakes for the for the Amalgamate game anymore. Well, I don't think they ever have. Unfortunately. No, they they never have. There's never been a, a remake of any of the any of the uh, third installments, which you know were the best installments. They were, but yeah. usually they also incorporate a lot of the elements that they added for those third installments into the remakes anyway. So, mm-hmm. um, by the way, if you have Pokemon, let's go. Uh, save data on your switch you can get a free mew i saw that and, and if you have pokemon sword and shield data on your switch you can get a jirachi i saw that too and i believe um you can also just get in uh legends arceus uh, you can get a shaman hmm. um if you have sword and shield save data i believe and then you also get like a shaman kimono that you can wear now that I did not know. Hmm. Yeah. So, good stuff. Uh, yeah. Of course, that doesn't come out until January. Mm-hmm. Which is only like two months away. Oh, yeah, it's close by. It's just we have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl now. Or you do, anyway. My mother bought it for me as a Christmas present, so <laughs> I have to wait another month. I, 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 uh, my mom asked me for a Christmas list and I put, uh, SMT5 on there because I knew I was going to buy, uh, Pokemon mm. because, uh, Gen 4 is one of my favorite gens. I really, really love it. Yeah. Um, I've had some close calls so far, uh, in my Nuzlocke, nice but I've gotten no casualties so far. I've been, I've got like, um, I have a Gyarados, <clears throat> um, which Gyarados learns waterfall like really early on. Um, it's the first water type move they learn. 
and that's really nice. So that's base power 70 on a physical heavy uh, water type. And Gyarados is one of the better uh, better water types for physical attacking besides. <clears throat> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of move changes in this game that are just nice. Has like... Uh, Monferno has power-up punch. Oh, that is good. I mean, I go for Torterra myself, but still. So, power-up punch is really good on Monferno, especially because they get mock punch as well, so you can just power-up punch to power up your attack stat and then get that priority with mock punch and just kill things. Aura, 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 aura. Aura, 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 yes. Um, uh, sorry, no, that's Lucario. <laughs> aura, aura. But uh, um, I like the animations. I like the full models of the characters. Those look pretty great. I haven't unlocked the ability to have my Pokemon follow me around outside, and I haven't unlocked the ability to customize my trainer yet. Huh. Um, that's a little bit later on. Fair enough. You don't even get a uh, mystery gift until you get to Jubilife. I mean, that's that was inherent in the original one, I think. Mm-hmm. So, you know... You got, you got to unlock things. Um, the underground, uh, by the way, yeah, very very fun to go down there. Um, the same sort of mining for things is is there, and now you also have these huge areas in which you can see Pokemon in the overworld. Um, and these Pokemon are ones that normally have a pretty low spawn rate on the uh, overworld. So, uh, so tell me. What? How do you like, from an aesthetic standpoint, the basically chibi wild area? Is what it is. I like it. It. it I go into a, the little uh, underground area and I see Pokemon, and it's it's a beautiful little small like square uh, room, pretty big actually, uh, square room, and it, you can see these Pokemon. And like, I was able to catch a Ralts down there. Oh. Which normally trying to get a Ralts sucks. Um, hold that thought for a second because I need to clarify something. How do Nuzlocks work when it comes to those dens? You could say one Pokemon per den, but for me, I'm just going with one Pokemon from the underground in total. Yeah, that's and that's the Ralts that I caught. Well, I mean, that's about as solid a Pokemon as you can get. Mm. Yeah, I wanted a, I wanted a Ralts. Male or female? Uh, it it ended up being female, so I'm getting a Gardevoir. Mm. Yeah. Um, however, it has a nature that has anti-special attack, so uh, let's 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 do it. <laughs> what does it emphasize in return? Uh, special defense. So it'll be tankier, but. Uh... Yeah, I, I can get some stuff working with that. Mm, I'd imagine so. Um, right now, I think I'm running uh, Monferno, Staravia, uh, Cricketune, Gyarados, uh, Luxio, and one other I'm not remembering right now. Well, sounds like a pretty solid team at the moment. Yeah, I got type coverage, which is nice. Um... It's yeah, it is good game. The music remixes are great. Um, Underground is fun to run around in, uh, and I think the catch rate is lower in the underground um, in exchange for the rare Pokemon showing up. So it'll be a little bit harder to catch some things. It's a fair balance. Yeah, uh, but hey makes it so that you don't have to just kind of uh, run around for hoping for a 2% chance of something showing up. Um, you can also mine statues that you can place in your secret base to manipulate which types are more likely to show up. That does actually sound better in general, to be honest. Like, the rare Pokemon is, it's not running, like you say, it's not running around for like 20 minutes just hoping for one to show up. It's okay, I'm going to spend an extra five minutes just making sure I catch this. It's making a gameplay instead of just grinding. Yeah. 
And you can see it in the overworld. So if you're like, okay, this isn't, it's not spotting here. You can keep running around and get a better idea for what shows up where, explore and stuff. Mm. Um, and it's fun because as you're exploring, you can go mining in the walls, get materials, get, um, you know, evolution stones, heart scales. So uh, I'm guessing that any fossils aside from the. Uh, armor fossil and the skull fossil are locked behind uh, the national decks. Uh, I do not, not know as of yet. Yeah. Um, I did get the I did get the skull fossil, but I've I've not spent a huge amount of time in the underground because you know Nuzlocke, and I don't want to see something that I can't catch. Fair enough. Uh, how do fossils apply for a Nuzlocke? Uh varies from person to person. Uh, I personally don't like to use fossils uh, if I'm doing a Nuzlocke, but this is my first time doing a Nuzlocke on my own, so yeah. Mm. Yeah, generally I'm, speaking, I'm uh, Nuzlocke's frown on things that are very fixed. Mm. So Fair it's enough. like um, if it's a Pokemon that you can get a trade for in-game, like uh you know, that, that one dude that wanted the rare Pokemon for the Farfetch'd in the first game, that kind of thing, where it's just like, hey, you can get this, but it requires you to have already caught this other thing first, which is still random chance. So that's okay. That's fair play. Mm. But if it's just, mm. hey, we're going to give you this very specific Pokemon, that's generally not really a thing that is considered okay, generally speaking. Fair enough. Hmm. Uh, I'm honestly not too fond of either of the fossils for Gen 4 myself, anyway. What were they? I like Kranidos. Rampardos and Bastiodon, the unstoppable force and the immovable object. I know so little about Gen 4 that I only know Kranidos because I saw Gura and Kali fight it in the first gym uh, when I was watching them play it and I don't even know what the other one is. <laughs> uh, one, okay, so Rampardos is the evolved form of Kranidos. Um, yeah, I got that. Part. And the Bastion is what he just posted. So that's Rampardos and then Bastion. Um, I oh, like Rampardos. That, that thing's fun. It's so dumb, but I love it anyway. It's a little castle. That's yeah. great. Yeah. This is um, a evolution shield on. Becomes a shield and then goes and becomes a castle. A rampart. Because it's Rampardos. Yeah. And then the other one's just a fucking dinosaur slash dragon, whatever. It headbutts things because it's dumb. Because Kranidos. Kranidos. But, uh, yeah. Um, uh, I So far, I've been having a lot of fun with the game. And the, just the move choices in general for um, these Pokemon have are, are just better. This is a, this is a great Pokemon game. Um, lots of good style to it, and not made by the Pokemon Company or Game Freak. That's really fucking harsh. Every time, every time they give Pokemon over to another studio, they end up having beautiful backgrounds and lots of animations and just a lot of work that they put into it and you can really tell and it really shines and it's like why Pokemon Coliseum and XC Gales of Darkness are so beloved and then Pokemon Company gets them back and it's like well this uh, this fight arena is going to be green fog I thought Coliseum and XC Gale of Darkness were beloved because of Mirror B <laughs> that's just one reason. I know. I Mirror know. V is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Freaking Ludicolo for life. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this is solid. Uh, I have not 
lost a Pokemon yet, though I have had close calls, uh, particularly with uh, Jupiter's Skunk Tank, really kind of um, put me in a dangerous situation. Because that thing was tanky, it hit hard. You it, don't say. And also it has Aftermath as an ability, so it will kill you if you're not careful after you defeat it. Um, I, I it almost killed my Gyarados right after it evolved from a Magic Harp. Mm. It's just like yes, finally, no, 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 don't. I worked so hard for this. Yeah, um, that's about it for my week. But ones are great. I have very little patient. How you doing? I have very little as well. Oh. Although, uh, I have gone through one experience in this past week that I believe I could have lived my entire life happily without uh, ever experiencing, uh, that being passing a kidney stone. Mm. Oh. That does not sound very pleasant, my it, dude. It was not. I've heard more than one person compare it uh, to... I've heard more than one person speak of it as basically the closest thing that a male can ever feel to the pains of childbirth. Mm. And, uh... <laughs> well... I was calling out sick... I called out sick two days this week when I... <laughs> usually go the entire year without ever calling out sick. And if my mother had had her way, I would have called out... I would have called out most of the rest of the week as well. Anyway, it was just... It was a lot of pain. It was a lot of going to and from the bathroom and just being... In a lot of pain that refused to let up, regardless of the medicine that I took. And it was a lot of... I mean, I was apparently lucky it was a very small stone, so it's just... Hopefully gone, and I'm just dealing with the aftermath at this point. But it was not pleasant. Not... not pleasant at all. I just have that one episode of Friends running in my head right now, where... I've never seen They made that comparison between kidney stone and childbirth very literal by having one character going through labor while another was passing a kidney stone and having like smash cuts between their screams. <laughs> like, yeah, they were pretty explicit about the comparison there. <laughs> I, the first a hello 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 Pick it cut out mushy mush Uh, no, we cannot hear you, uh, patient one. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Good. Hmm. That's an old reference. I haven't even seen the thing that that reference comes from. It's just fucking osmosis. Anyway, uh, patient, you were saying something, probably. I, we got like a word of it. Impatient. Ooh. Technical difficulties. Hmm. Mm, but, mm. 
Testing, okay. can I? Yeah. I'm. Yeah. Hello? It's getting a little silly. <laughs> uh, we get him back for just long enough for the sound check to work and we can confirm it's working and then it immediately cuts out again. <laughs> uh. Um. Hmm. Uh, okay, so if I only have a few seconds, maybe I should just say maybe it's better if I just leave it here for this week. Uh, sound check. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you hear me now? Good. Yes. Okay, then. Should I should I keep talking again? Yes, go. Go. Okay. Go man, go. All right. So my experience was apparently pretty minor because I I had an x-ray taken on Monday and the apparently it was just minor enough that they didn't even notice the stone on the x-ray. Then I went to a hospital on Wednesday. The pain was just that bad and the x-ray picked it up and said that it was very small and almost finished. So, yeah, I haven't felt any pain since Wednesday, thank goodness. Mm. But I've just been uh, drinking lots of water just in case to make sure that I don't wake up again in the wee hours of the morning with crippling pain coming from my middle that'll keep me from doing anything. Hydration is very, very important. Yes, it is. And now more than ever. Mm. <sighs> so that was the most eventful part of this for me. Yeah. And it'll be an event that I hope I don't have to go through again. Although if I did, then I would be able to commiserate with Zomniac because he's had to go through it twice. Mm. Yeah. Poor Zom. I'm not even oh, sure dear. what causes kidney stones I mean unhealthy living is a good part of it but he's ne he's has never been obese like I am so I don't know <sighs> that aside uh, other events this week it, not too much else going on I uh, I bought brilliant diamond for a friend of mine and he is going to be buying me Pikmin 3 Deluxe uh, at some point in the future as a uh, early Christmas present. Both ways. And, uh... Hmm. I did have something else to talk about. Can't quite remember what it was, though. Hmm. Anything was it in the video game family? Hmm. Been mostly playing. Uh, I've gotten back into playing new Pokemon Snap. I still enjoy that game. Still enjoy trying to figure out the little quirks of where some Pokemon could be hiding. Although I'm starting to get annoyed at how to wake up Lugia. I, well, I I didn't actually play enough Pokemon Snap to get to Lugia. You get the three legendary birds to get into a massive fight, and then there's Shut up. A <laughs> and there's a song or something. Mm -hmm. Casey, there's a slow king that you need to talk to, and he's gonna complain about not having pants. Um. Naked. Something, okay. something, I... Weight Watchers gag, and then he'll show up. <laughs> I hope you're happy. I've completely lost my train of thought now. I was pretty happy with it, yeah. <laughs> That's, I remember way too much of that film. 
What about the giant flying airship? Yeah. That's the best part of the film. Yeah. A dude decides Pokeballs are for scrubs and devises a giant electric cage to put the birds in. Like, okay. You do you, bud. Anyway. Giant electric cage and also one of the birds is an electric type. So probably not the brightest plan, but still. Well, I mean, he siphoned off all of its electricity first. Hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Let's see. Mm. Over this past week, I made a couple of pecan pies for the first time. Oh. That... Uh, that's pretty nice. My mom's going to be making apple pie for the first time uh, for Thanksgiving. Hmm. So I made the pie crust from scratch. I had to uh, make two attempts at that because the first attempt that I made, <laughs> uh, the <laughs> the recipe called for a teaspoon of salt. I accidentally put a tablespoon. Salty pie. Mm, just the crust, fortunately, but yeah. I it's more a savory option than, than a dessert, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that I can think of some way to salvage it, but that's for the future. Hmm. So the pies well, turned out could, well. Uh, you know, traditional, like, British meat pies, maybe? Yeah, I... Eh. Would still be a bit salty, when I, but, you know. I like salty, and I like savory, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, but it's it's not something that I'm considering at the moment. Anyway, Berkeley? I'm not I'm not planning on making a savory pie anytime in the near future. I've got the dough frozen for the time being. <sighs> so, what else was there? For better or for worse, updated. It's a one piece time travel story. Rather good quality. Mm. Okay. Uh, for better or for worse. I swear I had something else to talk about, but I can't remember what it was. Anything recently visited? Any... Oh, that's right. Now I remember. Uh, about uh, 20 years ago or so, there was a uh, game show called Legends of the Hidden Temple. There was, yes. They've rebooted it recently. Okay. Uh, I just uh, I found out that they've uh, rebooted the show with adult contestants now. And it's uh, just a rather entertaining one. They've reformatted it uh, to tell the story that the episode is based on across the course of the episode, and it's uh, just a really entertaining show, in my opinion. I'd recommend it. Fair enough. Yeah. Gotta age it up yeah. some, because it's, you know, it's trading off nostalgia. So, that's how that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were actually, in one episode, there were two uh, contestants who competed on the original version of the show and came back for redemption. Hmm. 
All right, so with that out of the way, that was the only other thing that I really had a significance to talk about. My weeks are never that exciting. So let's move on to your, I'm sure, much more exciting week, Casey. That's mean. That's that's so mean. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> okay. You're not my type, but it's still I'm doing you. Oh. Kind of rubbing salt in the wound, but all right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Cookie Run Kingdom is still good. Yeah, that's still still enjoying that. Got super lucky with the poll, so that's good. Yay. Um, Jeremy Lee is too good a voice actress, and she made me cry for baked desserts. It's not fair. I don't appreciate it, but good job. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Would you rather? Would you rather cry over a volcano? I don't get the reference. Why okay. does the link always... Okay, Just a moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. There. I don't even know what that is. And I can't look at it right now because we're recording. It's kind of... I know. Um... So, mm the hell else did I do? Uh, bu- bu- bu. Uh, like I said, I watched um, first Gura and currently Kali play Pokemon Diamond, and that's that's fun. Both of them quite enthusiastic. Everyone seems to be very enthusiastic to play Diamond and Pearl. Apparently. All the VTubers immediately start being like, we can play Pokemon. We can play Pokemon. Yeah. They got permissions and everyone was like, yep, doing this now. Callie did not have a stream scheduled and she was like, I don't care. I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Next lock, let's go. Yeah. God, her fucking Pokemon names are great. They're all so good. Jay's Ubat Biggie the mm-hmm. penguin thing fucking um T- oh, 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 two peck two peck yes two peck god I'm eagerly awaiting the bug pokemon that has already been pre-named as Kanye Pest um <laughs> Oh, and Lux Ray J, presumably Johnson. Hmm. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's good names. Credit. And and the rival chat. Chat I was gonna go with. I was like, oh, go for chat. Oh no, that's the, the, the T instead. Now it's chat. Oh no. Oh, and he's already telling me what to do. Backseat gaming. <laughs> oh, damn it. oh, good stuff. It's so good. It's it's always nice when they're enthusiastic about something because it adds like mm-hmm. something to it. Obviously, so that's that's really that's really fun. Um, <clears throat> Pokemon. Yeah, I I want to play it. It's pretty low on my list of games that I really want to play, though. It's, like, lower than New Snap, because I still want to play New Snap. Uh, (laughs) So many games. Uh, So many games, I cannot play them all. (laughs) Um, Or any of them, because I keep wasting time on fucking gotcha Kingdom Builder games. Um... This, this is another reason why um, I 
cookie run just took a, a lot of time when I would get, sit down and have to restart all the construction of my buildings and I would end up I had I had I had three more gotcha games that I needed, so I, I removed those three gotcha games that I did not need. I basically only have one now because I'm only logging into FitGo just to get the daily rewards. That's literally it. Mm. Because my uh, thing that I do that I shouldn't talk about um, is currently broken. Not because it's actually broken, because they fixed it like the day that the update came out but i can't be bothered to update it <clears throat> so right so. it's just staying broken because i don't care because there's nothing to do in the game anyway it's, it's it's pretty slow right now yep nothing going on i would legit just be farming ascension materials and who the fuck cares? I don't want to just have it running in the background for 45 minutes getting fucking yeah. evil bones. They did a... They did a do you see they did a video recently um, where they announced um, that uh, on the 30th they're going to be doing a stream for um, the pre-release special for the Atlantis Lost Belt. Mm-hmm. So we're getting that early, and then uh, they also announced that um, for Thanksgiving we're going to be getting um, free SQ as well as mass missions and stuff, and then uh, um, the banner is going to have like Okita, Skahawk, um, Moriarty, uh, Zheng Yu, uh, Jack, Reigns, and... Uh, Jack, uh, Okita, and Skahawk are getting their animation updates. So not a single American servant is what you're telling me <laughs> for the Thanksgiving banner. Um, yeah. Uh, not even a pity Canadian. We have... Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was Nero Caster was the last one. So, kind of weird one to put at Thanksgiving. That swimsuit Nero, but sure. Uh, uh you based your government mostly off of Rome, so yeah. We have a lot of British people here. You do have a lot of British people. Not British people from the 1800s and forward, but a lot of British people. Granted. But, yeah, no. Uh, so that's just going to be a short thing until... I think they're doing the Lost Boat before <laughs> the Christmas event, which is kind of weird, but... Whatever. Okay. I'm, ju I'm just trying to muster up my willingness to care like I'm just gonna continue doing what I was doing before I'm gonna do the lost belt and then I'm gonna stop playing because I don't care because there's no reason yeah. I I have run out of things to do in that game and so the story is the only thing to care about anymore yeah that's fair <clears throat> I'm in a similar boat to be honest mm. Where like I I have some characters I'm kind of working on, but I'm really not going to focus on them until like a lotto thing happens. So, hmm. um, yeah. Uh, anything else, Casey? Not really. No. <laughs> well, that's okay. Um, it's, uh, it's the week before Thanksgiving, it's a bit, it's slow, but that's all right. I haven't played Genshin since I ranted about it a few weeks ago. So. Really? Yeah, just haven't even touched it, haven't logged in, haven't done anything. <sighs> Is it because of... Is it because Cookie Run is right there? Uh, it's because 
uh, this is the problems that I was talking about when we talked about it. It's, it doesn't feel rewarding yeah. to play anymore. I've played my fill of the stuff that was there, and there is a bunch of new content for it, and there's going to be more coming soon, like another region of uh, Inazuma, that was the name of it. Uh, was that the name of it, or am I thinking of something completely different? I don't fucking know anymore. I think but, that I think that's close. Yeah, like they had six. They had like three islands, and then they added another one, and then they added two more, and then they added another one. And now there's more, I guess. So fucking sure. Okay. It's drip feeding locations to us because. There aren't going to be any more big ones until uh, September of next year. So I say us because, like, I'm going to continue playing it, but it's a little touch and go at the moment because, like, you know, you go in and you play for a little bit and you go and explore and find tiny bits and pieces of really really minimal rewards that you don't actually need anymore and uh yeah it all kind of feel, feels pointless so yeah yeah it, wait way to go yeah. Mihoyo. you had something really good and now everybody's just uh whatever we say that with there, there are still a very uh, dedicated contingent to players who there's a bit of sploosh going on for one of the new characters that has been going on for a while. I just, I don't see as as many people talking about it as I used to. Yeah, that might be due to not looking at that particular bubble and. The people on our server not really caring about it anymore. I think yeah. maybe Min still plays it, but I he doesn't talk about it if he does. So I don't know. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, Genshin. Yeah, I look forward to when I log in and do like a fucking forty-minute puzzle and get a common chest out of it. Just actually a thing that happens in that game at this point. <sighs> oh, uh, I almost forgot. Um, yeah. So uh, I wanted to add, add, touch on one detail in the new Pokemon game, and that is that there is an always on EXP share, but it is scaled. <clears throat> yes, there is, yes. Um, it is scaled so that your Pokemon are all going to be around the same level, mm. but not. Um, it, it's not really easy to over level unless you're just battling every single trainer. Then you'll get a little bit over leveled, but for the most part, it's pretty balanced. It's not like the broken EXP share and <clears throat> amount of just free EXP they give out in Sword and Shield, which is nice. Mm. It just it just means there's less grinding, and that's that's just a really great way to do it. Yeah. You can so get a magic hop and actually get it to usability level without like faffing about at the beginning of every fight. Uh... It, it'll receive you know a little bit less experience because it didn't participate, but it'll still receive experience. Yeah. So you can still drag it, it with you to the finish line. Yeah, and it doesn't require much to get to level 20, so, you know. By the time you want right. the gigantic uh, flying water dragon. Jesus. Oh, I, by the way, I just unlocked the ability to have your Pokemon follow you in the overworld. And... <laughs> This is really funny. Um, where I'm like, oh well, I want uh, 
my Gyarados to follow me. Yep. And it's just it's teeny. Yeah. It's it's like a little floaty snaky. You you kind of wish, don't you, that they were to scale. I do, but I also realize that this game would be unplayable. Yeah. I wanna have my Waylord follow me. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna never see the screen. Yeah. Waylord really is the perfect Pokemon to learn fly. It just is. <laughs> Your own personal blimp. Unstoppable. Mm. That Waylord. Wait, Absolute Waylord the one that's like a, like a really huge but also lightweight? Or am I thinking of something else? Um, I don't think Waylord is light. Wait, you might be thinking, yeah, Waylord's 870 pounds. Uh, you might be thinking of like a Drift Blim or something. Because uh, that's an actual is... just. Drift Blim isn't big, though. It's big enough to carry children away. Oh. That's that's true of pretty much all evolved <laughs> Pokemon, though. And surprising number of Pokedex entries say they do exactly that. <laughs> hey kid go on your pokemon journey hey by the way um these wonderful balloon type pokemon come to this valley wind works yeah, yeah really <laughs> you just you have to wonder whether the whole pokemon journey thing is just some bizarre wicker man style culling that they take part in just it's it's Darwinism out. at its finest. If they survive, then you know, great. If they don't, well, good harvest for next year. Great. This is what it means to be a, a Pokemon master. See, that's the trick of it. It's, it's we don't get to be Pokemon masters. They are the Pokemon masters. <laughs> we serve them. <laughs> Offer up the children to the masters. This is really dark, but could so easily be canon. <laughs> one thing I liked about the, the Sword and Shield entries was it was like, oh yeah, no, this one crushes steel beams. Hmm. This one can 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 rip open a tank like wow we, we, are we are we speaking from experience here what what, what happened here i mean it is uh, i've forgotten the name the uh gala it is it is in Galand. so i guess maybe world war one happened and they actually had pokemon participate and try that shit and it worked could be who knows? I like the. Um, I'm looking through the Pokedex right now, and the entry for Magikarp is: "It is said to be the world's weakest Pokemon. No one knows why it has managed to survive." No one knows, huh? <laughs> mystery. Yep. Then uh, Gyarados. Once Gyarados appears, its rage never settles until the Pokemon has raised the fields and mountains around it. In fairness, Magikarp would actually find it really, really easy to survive because it has no nutritional value. It is, like, terrible to eat, so it's not exactly a prey species. It doesn't require much. doesn't really need to hunt for food. It probably just is a bottom feeding fish if anything so yeah it's pretty simple easy life a magic up and then eventually something pisses it off and then it kills everything so you know <laughs> oh man there was that uh one little mobile game which was like the magic harp jump you remember that vaguely Yeah. 
I love Magikarp. Magikarp is pretty great. I'm I'm just remembering. Oh, freaking. I feel really bad now because he was on the podcast, but I. Uh, Ericsson? Yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah. He did that fic that was uh, the Poker Girls fic. Where it was. Um, well, no, not Poker Girls. Uh, Moemon. That was it. Because that's two different things. Two very different things. Um, and he had the asshole murderous protagonist get glummed onto by a magic harp that was so stupid it forgot that it couldn't breathe on land. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it forgot that it couldn't breathe on land so it just kept running up to him and trying to hold on to him and then it would run out of breath and would have to jump jump back into the water and it just kept doing that until it didn't need to go in the water anymore. <laughs> oh, it was great. Oh, made only better by the fact that the protagonist was like, I hate everything about this situation. <laughs> I, I want to murder it. But apparently, this world frowns on that sort of thing. Man, I miss that story. Uh. Hmm. I don't even know what he's doing anymore. I think um, he... I do have him on like uh, author alerts, so I think he last thing I saw was he was writing something for that one... Uh, book that that one fanfic author wrote I don't uh, American Kitsune something 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 mm-hmm. you vaguely remember that I think Kenshi actually uh, beta read that book or something um, <clears throat> yeah and he's writing a fic based on that Okay. I sure. I I I don't want to talk shit, but I remember people saying that book wasn't especially good. But all right, whatever works. And it is kind of interesting and impressive that a uh, fanfic author now has their own category on fanfiction.net. That's pretty cool. Good for them. Like, I can talk shit, but they're yeah. better than I am. Uh, yeah, I got nothing else. I, oh. I, I never have anything else, because I suck, and I'm lame. One, one kind of last thing. Yeah, any? Um, when you pause the game, when you bring up your menu in um, uh, Diamond, um, it will bring up your current objective. It does, yes. So for so it will say go to Veilstone City, and then it will show you on. And you can check your map, and it'll show you exactly where you're supposed to go. And that's just it's just a little nice quality of life stuff like that that just makes this game so good to play. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's a, I think that's a podcast. Yeah. Woo. Woo. Totally. Thinking about how to end this, definitely not uh, going through all my cookie run stuff and just fixing production. I think this can probably wait a little bit, let's be honest. Okay, so that's the podcast stuff. Um, Discord link in the description, Patreon link in the description. Thanks, thanks for this. Bye, everybody. Bye. Low puppy. Hmm. Rabbit. Patient, you haven't talked in 20 minutes. You waited the entire episode to say that at the end. Are you surprised? No. I'm impressed, I know. frankly. You know that I'm patient. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh.